Hello and welcome back to the testing grounds. Today I am going over a build that is kind of inspired from the previous two builds. At least it uses the same mechanic and more or less the same setup. So the previous builds were sour gas condenser builds designed to condense sour gas down into uh, methane and then pump the methane out. And uh, the idea was to do that very efficiently. And right, and we we could in theory have gotten a more efficient system than what we ended up with. Uh, I showed off three builds. The main thing is that you need a sulfur recovery system in order to do that. Here we're gonna show another application that doesn't need any of these extra recovery systems that just shows sort of the raw efficiency of the setup that we have. So what are we condensing today? We are condensing oxygen down into liquid oxygen. I have this chamber filled with uh, 70 degree oxygen. 70 degrees is what you'd get from an electrolyzer. I have an output chamber for the oxygen, which is all vacuumed out at this point. Um, and I have a thermoregulator. It's a negative 192.1. When it reaches, when this cools, uh, warms up to negative 192, this will turn on. And it's going to run for 14 hours and then shut off for 25 hours and then repeat, right? So it's going to be, it's going to be roughly one wheeze wart worth of cooling to keep the system up and running. A thermoregulator uh, puts out 33,600 kilo DTUs of, uh, of cooling effectively or of heat. Both both work depending upon how you measure it. Um, and it also, uh, a, a wheeze wart is 12,000 kilo DTUs. So this entire system is gonna be powered off of one wheeze wart worth of cooling. That's it. And a lot of that wheeze wart worth of cooling is actually in this liquid pump right here, the heat that's generated by that pump which is kind of going to be hard to get rid of. So th there's some optimizations you can do to this build. I'll talk about that at the end. Um, but yeah, this is about to turn on. I want to measure from uh, that cycle how much oxygen we get and uh, how long this thermoregulator was on. So let's go ahead and turn this on and bump up the speed. So we see this turn on. Uh, this turned on, what is this? Uh, roughly 1845 into cycle 22. All right. So let's talk about the principles of the system while we wait for this to run. Um, again, we're recapturing, we're using pipe throttling to make sure that our pipes don't break as there's a phase change within the pipe. We're limiting this to one kilogram per second. And then on top of that, we're using this to exchange heat with the incoming oxygen. So up here, we're at around 70 degrees because that's the input temperature of the oxygen. There's a little bit of heat exchange going on here, um, but we're at roughly 70 degrees and it's slowly going to go down, right? You can see that temperature falling until we reach the condensation point of the oxygen, which is negative 183, right? So we're taking all of the sort of cold that we're producing here, right? And we are recycling it, we're recapturing it. All of it is being dumped into the oxygen, which is on its way down to be condensed, right? Very efficient system. Now, normally what you would have to do to produce liquid oxygen is you'd have to take this oxygen at 70 degrees and you'd have to cool it all the way down to negative 183, right? At negative 183 is where it condenses. If I pause for a second, because we're also about to, well, we're not quite there, but we're gonna see this one tick up. If I look at the oxygen, right? It has roughly one, uh, it has specifically heat capacity of roughly one DTU per gram per degree, right? So. One DTU is required to heat one gram by one uh, degree Celsius. If we're going from 70 degrees to negative 183, which is the condensation point of the oxygen, right? That's 253 uh, DTUs to move one gram of, uh, of oxygen from uh, 70 degrees down to negative 183. Right? That's 253,000 DTUs if you want to move a kilogram of it down to 183C. Now, 283 DTUs is a lot more than uh, 12,000 DTUs, which is this system is running on. In fact, it's about 20 times more, and you'd only be getting a kilogram out. We're getting, I've, I've measured this, so I'm going to spoiler alert. We get about a, uh, one and a half kilograms of liquid oxygen out of this system, and we get uh, one and a half kilograms of liquid oxygen off of roughly 1 20th of the cooling that it would normally take. This is a huge efficiency gain, right? This thing is roughly 30 times more efficient, and I'll talk about how to make it even more efficient later. Uh, first, I want to note this thing is going to relatively soon uh, check out. 
191.4, right? It's cooling back down. Uh, 191.5, it's gonna tick up. Um, by my estimates, yeah, we're getting there. Six, it should be about right here that it uh, turns back on. At about 8.45 in the morning on cycle 23. Let's see if I'm about right, or roughly here. And now it turns off, boom, see? When we come back, it'll be on, or we'll, I'll make sure we see it when it comes back on. Um, very efficient system, extremely efficient system. Now, one of the downsides, of course, is that this liquid oxygen is coming out at a temperature much higher than that of liquid oxygen, right? There are some maybe exploity things that you can do to keep it as liquid oxygen once it's down here because there are a few bugs in the game that allow you to do that, but probably without any exploits, if just using this pipe throttling mechanic, which I don't believe is an exploit, but just using that mechanic, um, we can just put the liquid oxygen directly into our rocket. And I'm gonna show that in a bit as well. So yeah, this is still running. We're gonna see that this, it's at negative 193.5. It's still going up a little bit because there's sort of thermal mass over here, but this is gonna slowly start ticking down. This is gonna reach an equilibrium at around, or reach a peak at around negative 193.7, and then it's gonna start falling down again, and then this thing is gonna turn back on, right? So it'll be 14 hours on, 25 hours off. You can do the math yourself, that's about one Wieswort worth of uh, cooling power, and then we'll measure how much oxygen we get. This is 100 tiles, boom. Four by twenty-five. Um, yeah, it, it's a it's about one and a half kilograms of oxygen per second. There's not much else to say about this build. It's relatively simple, and I want to emphasize this is not the only application. Again, we've shown another application, which is sour gas condensation. But this sort of heat exchange process is so efficient. The ability to recapture your heat or recapture your cold for whatever purpose that you want. Is, is the backbone of a lot of thermal efficiency improvements in your build. It, it, it's not spending a lot of energy to achieve something that you've already achieved. We've already cooled this down. If we don't need that cold anymore, we might as well recycle it back in and use it to condense more gas, right? And that's what this is, a massive recycling project. Now, I wanna talk a little bit about efficiencies here. So the rate limiting step, the rate limiting step is clearly not the, the cooling capacity, right? We have a pretty simple, not really optimized, maybe there's a way to improve this sort of uh, cooling element down here. We have a thermal regulator, which is spending most of its time off, right? The cooling is not the problem. The problem, as it turns out, is that the gas flow in the game is not fast enough. We're pumping things out at high pressure gas vents, which is the technology you'd probably have access to in the game, but the gas doesn't flow down fast enough there's sort of a, a limit to how much gas can move per tick. And we run into that limit because we're trying to condense more of that gas than we're putting in. So the consequence is that if you wanted to make this a higher throughput system, you could do that. You need to make it wider though, right? Um, this system in theory could produce, uh, I haven't done the math actually, but let's say around three and a half, no, this, this system could actually handle four kilograms per second of uh, liquid oxygen, right? Um, I mean, it basically, we want to, if we're still stick, sticking off of one thermal regulator, right? This system could easily handle four kilograms per second of liquid oxygen. Oh, turn, turn back on. And here we are, uh, four, eight, ten hours in. So this is uh, 10 a.m. on cycle 24. I'll leave you guys to do the math if you want uh, to yourselves, because it's just basically some multiplication. Uh, but over here, we have what well, ranges actually from uh, 15 to 13.8 kilograms. We have a little pocket here of 26.5, but then we also have this liquid down here, which doesn't have that much, right? This, if you want to add it all up, and I've done the, I've done the addition, um, is, roughly 1.5 kilograms, right? So again, pretty simple system. You don't need it to have it be this tall, but you do need it to be wider. 
I can show an optimized version of this if there's enough interest. I think the basic principle is what a lot of people are going to be interested in. And just to show, uh, let's turn on sandbox mode here, uh, that you can just put it into, we're just going to slam one of these down. Um, yeah, and we'll see, right, this is going to start filling up with oxygen. No breakages, no anything. Um, I can redirect more pipes into this. One of the limits, I suppose, is that because all these pipes are throttled to one kilogram per second, the maximum uh, rate at which you refuel your rocket is going to be four kilograms per second. Because you'll have a pipe coming in here, a pipe coming in here, a pipe coming in, coming in here, and you won't be able to make more connections. Because if you made more connections, those pipes would break as they went over one kilogram in their contents. But still, I'm not sure... I mean, the, there's a bit of a trade-off there, right? Because in theory, you could get up to 10 kilograms per second, and you could real, refuel your rocket two and a half times faster. Um, but at the same time, the rate-limiting step is often not the, the liquid oxygen in terms of refueling your rocket. It's your liquid fuel tanks. Or am I wrong? No. Uh, I guess it isn't your liquid fuel tanks, because they you'll have multiple liquid fuel tanks. So scratch what I said there. Um, but if you're willing to accept a slightly lower rate of um, fueling for your rocket, right? You can run this entire thing off of a single thermal regulator, right? The entire, you can get four kilograms per second with off of a single thermal regulator. You can get one and a half off of a single wheeze wort worth of cooling. Because again, we're recapturing all of that cold that we're generating. And again, I know that isn't the proper way to talk about it, but, um, it's just simpler from a layman perspective to, to say that. So, um, yeah, that's it for the build. Uh, there are other applications. I think I'm going to start doing some other things, but um, right, like I, I, I'll leave it to a lot of you to, to come up with more builds that utilize this principle. Because uh, I think once you understand this principle, a lot of things open up to you. Right? And I, I don't want to beat people over the head with, oh, and here's another obvious thing that you can do with it, right? You can condense liquid oxygen, you can condense sour gas, you can, right? There's a bunch of things you can do. I want to lay off of that for a bit. Maybe we'll revisit it with some extra builds, uh, but I want to look at some other mechanics and how to use them. But again, um, if, if the thermal, if, if things were unclear, if the thermodynamics of the previous build were unclear when it comes to sour gas condensation and stuff like that, if the complication of sulfur and what that did to our last build is confusing. This one should make things very plain. The only reason we even need to, to cool this down is because this pump generates heat and there's conduction uh, across the tiles of oxygen. Everything else is recycled, right? The efficiency losses are very minor. The system works very cheaply. We don't have to spend 253,000 DTUs to, to get our oxygen cooled, right? We don't have to just go off of, we start at this point, we go down to this point. This oxygen can start at any temperature, right? This oxygen can start at any temperature and it's perfectly fine, right? It'll still work in this system. So that's it for this uh, this build. Hopefully this is clear. If there are questions about how this works, because again, I, I've, I've posted some of this stuff to Reddit and I think there's a lot of confusion over the thermodynamics. Again, <laughs> there's still people who just think that this build is literally impossible. Um, I'm showing it right now, so hopefully it's clear. It isn't impossible. There isn't any magic. You can watch this thing oscillate on and off for yourself, right? It's here. It's back at its high point. It's going to dip back down again, right? It's going to start its way uh, down to negative 192, and this will turn back on, and the cycle will repeat itself. There's nothing crazy going on here, guys. It's it's just straight thermodynamics. You don't need to be spending as much energy as you do to get your liquid oxygen. Okay, I've been rambling enough. I'm going to leave things here. I'll catch you guys next time.